Right now on Amazon you can pick up this projector for just a little less than £60 in the UK. Now compared to other projectors like the GT1080E from Optima that I reviewed a little while ago and ones that claim to support full 1080p, this is actually a pretty awesome deal. Now, whether that's actually a useful projector or whether it's uh, kind of just a, an empty box of plastic is possible to, uh, to debate, but in this video we're going to take a look at this one and see if it's actually good for, well, anything and worth any of your money. Taking a look around the device, obviously on the front you have the lens itself as well as the intake for the incredibly loud fan. This thing is insane. I just, I don't even understand how it can get this loud for the fact that it's probably a 50mm fan and it's about 5mm thick, but it is insanely loud, so just bear that one in mind. On the back you have all of the inputs, so here you have the AC in as well as the main power switch. You also have a USB port, HDMI in, as well as headphone out, and AV in, so if you want to use your you know, GameCube with it, you can use the included adapter. You also have the IR receiver for the included remote, although this remote doesn't include any AAA batteries, so make sure that you pick up some AAA batteries as well. And you also have a VGA in if you want to use that too. On the top of the projector you have the power button and don't be fooled by this sort of aesthetic piece there is no other buttons on this device it is purely power and you have to go get batteries because this comes as standard I think on the AV input and there is no other way besides using the remote to switch it to HDMI VGA or really anything else so just put that one in mind I'd also mention that there is basically no settings available besides brightness and contrast and brightness doesn't do what you think it does it just changes the brightness of the actual image itself not the projector so just bear that one in mind. Also on the top you do have the focus wheel and the keystone wheel. We'll take a look inside this in a second and you'll see how that works but it is a very basic, it moves the, the actual lens in and out for focus and keystone moves a glass plate or a plexi plate inside to change the keystone. And on the bottom you do have a screw with a sort of foot on the bottom to allow you to elevate the uh, projector up a bit. So before we get to using this and seeing if it's actually worth your money I want to take it apart first. There's five screws on the bottom that allow you to take the top panel off and that reveals the circuit board and I can't really talk about the overall layout of the circuit board as I haven't bothered to actually fully trace everything out and work out how everything is connected to everything else but I would mention that there are a few some rather serious issues with it. First of all they couldn't be bothered to remake the circuit boards when they found out there was an issue so they actually just soldered a jumper wire uh, from one side of the board basically to the other. This is very visible on the top and they just used a bit of uh, non-conductive tape to hold it down so yeah, good job guys. Um, also, they use self-tapping uh, screws into the plastic here and while these screws aren't grounded in any way so it's not as much of an issue as if this was a metal casing or they were screwing into a metal casing, these uh, screws, especially the central one, actually cut into the circuit board revealing the copper and they actually cut a trace and if it, the, the screw was any wider it would have actually destroyed that trace entirely. Now it seems to be for, you know, functioning fine but I would make it clear that these screws are very badly designed in that they are cutting into the PCB, they're cutting away at the copper and they're potentially destroying traces. It is common practice to leave a significant amount of space around any mounting holes. I mean if you just look at a standard ATX motherboard you'll notice that all of the mounting holes for the motherboard have uh, grounding pads around them and they're also isolated for a good probably at least 3mm all the way around that's on top of any space just around the full isolation pad as well so with this versus that you know with with a motherboard versus this sort of board this is pretty terrible with that said i also took off the panel on the top to reveal the led with the heatsink it actually looks like a pretty tiny led probably in the order of maybe a five or maybe at most a 10 watt led package so it's kind of strange also they use a fairly decent heatsink and also as said a very loud fan but i can't really see this getting all that hot and I know what 5 and 10 watt LEDs do so uh, I'm not really sure there. Also, um, they do seem to have what looks like a temperature sensor, which is very nice to see on the top of the heatsink. Um, and they also have a fairly thin polarizer. Uh, and also, as you can see, for the keystone, it just moves a piece of plastic um, that, to sort of slightly change the, the width of the image and the uh, the angle of the image at the top and bottom. So it's uh, it, it functions, it works, but... Um, 
it's not the best design. Now onto the functionality of the projector. This thing does a decent enough job at content consumption. So if you're watching YouTube videos or if you're watching movies, it's not too bad. The overall uh, you know, visual aspect and the, the overall visual fidelity isn't too bad. The audio quality, because they just use a tiny, tiny little speaker in the back, is absolutely terrible. So make sure you have some speakers or headphones or something. But either way, it's it's decent enough for you know movie watching and stuff like that. You can run it at 1080p. It does accept a 1080p input signal, but the clarity for this, or as the Amazon listing says, clarity, um, just isn't there. It's it really you cannot read any text, especially if it's running at 1080p. If you run it at a lower resolution, as they do suggest in the Amazon listing, then it gets a little bit better but it's still not on the order of really being able to use it properly as, uh, as a monitor kind of thing or, or anything. I really only suggest using this for uh, maybe even outdoors if you've got a projector screen. Um, I'd also mention that uh, the actual overall image size, you can't really get more than about 50 inches just due to the ability to focus at a certain distance. So once you run out of focus, that's kind of the, the distance that you can do. Um, so the overall focal length is probably a uh, around two meters or so, which ends up giving you about a 50 inch screen, give or take. So I suppose that is kind of nice for a very budget projector and it does a decent enough job, but the fact that you cannot read text at all, you really, you cannot make anything out is a little bit, um, I suppose, underwhelming. So for 60 pounds, is this worth it? Well, I suppose if you're only ever watching movies with it or you know YouTube videos and stuff like that and you don't need to read any text at all and also if you don't mind the insane amount of uh, sound that comes from the, the built-in fan then maybe, maybe it is. I mean if you have headphones on or something then I guess it's okay and maybe I guess in a party scenario if you've already got music or whatever going on anyway and you just want to throw, throw your, your holiday pictures or whatever up on a slideshow then maybe it's not too bad but I can't recommend this for basically anything unless it's purely for movie watching and stuff like that the clarity or clarity uh, just isn't there you can't read text so if you are web browsing and especially if you're trying to watch YouTube videos you cannot read the titles of the videos at all it's just completely impossible to do that at least at 1080p if you do uh, add scaling or lower the resolution it does get a little bit better but then you are lowering, lowering the resolution so then it kind of gets even more fuzzy um, when it comes to you know content consumption and stuff like that so yeah I think it's um it's a fine line between slightly useful and probably not useful so um i guess i'll let you decide if by any stretch of the imagination you are interested in this uh, projector then feel free to take a look at the amazon link in the description down below there's also other ways that you can support me by using the affiliate links down there for amazon or overclockers uk there's also not a patreon page so if you want to support me in making these videos then feel free to take a look at that down there too and there's also a few other bits and pieces i do make these videos on um, monday wednesday and friday so feel free to tune in there and of course there's also a subscribe button down there too if you're new to the channel there will be some other videos over here for you to check out if you're you know still interested in watching my face and uh yeah we'll see you all in the next video